Praise the Lord. We rise up and pray together. You open your mouth and tell the Lord to actually teach you from the word of God tonight how to pray, what to pray for, how to have faith and expect an answer. And at this day, for this Bible study, we actually make a transformation in your prayer life. You understand? Praying more. And these words of Jesus become very precious to you. Opening your eyes to what you've never known. Opening your understanding to what you've never heard concerning prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of calling you Father. And this is what Jesus Christ has taught us. That we become children in the family of God. Brothers and sisters, brethren. Lord, we pray. We'll take a place as children of God. Children of the Heavenly Father. Around the table of the Lord. Even tonight in Jesus' name. That childlike face. That childlike affection. And a childlike supplication. That we're able to call upon you and look at you and say, Abba, Father. And then have a great expectation, confidence, trust, and faith. That you will do what you have said you will do. That childlike attitude and affection and faith. Give to every one of us tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray that these simple words of scripture. In the Lord's prayer, you'll take them to reform and transform our lives in jesus name i will pray that every prayer that is prayed here today and in all the places where we're listening to the word of god together you will answer those prayers in jesus name give us the key the key of answered prayer let it be in our heart that any time, every time we call upon you, there will be the great expectation of the answers to our prayers in Jesus' name. Do marvelous and wonderful things in the lives of all your children today. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can sit down. We'll come back to the Lord's Prayer again. And we're looking at Matthew chapter 6. Reading from verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. That's the prayer that Jesus Christ taught the multitudes. The multitudes gathered together. You understand? This is Simon on the Mount. And this prayer is part of that message. Part of that Simon. And as we come to this, it opens our eyes to what it means to actually pray. Because here is the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody prayed like Jesus. Moses was a great prayer warrior, but not like Jesus. And Joshua was a great person that had answers to prayer, but not really like Jesus. How about Elijah, that prophet of fire and the prophet of power? Hear me, O Lord, hear me now, that these people may know that you have turned their hearts back against yourself and that have done everything according to your word. And the fire came down, that prophet of it, a prophet of fire and power. He prayed and God answered, but not like Jesus. Jesus is way far ahead of every one of them. And then when you come to David, the psalmist of Israel, 
Of course, he prayed and he said, I cried unto the Lord, and thou hast heard my supplication. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But he prayed, and the Lord answered him. He said, I'm rejoicing. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name, who forgiveth all the iniquities and healeth all the diseases. The man prayed, and God answered. But this Jesus prayed much more than all of them with great speed this spontaneous answer and then you come to daniel and then you come to isaiah jeremiah ezekiel and habakkuk and those great prophets of old they prayed and god answered but when jesus prayed very different have you noticed in the old testament they'll pray to almighty god they'll pray to jehovah god they'll pray to the lord thy god they'll pray to the lord our god they'll pray to the god that delivered us from the land of egypt but when jesus prayed very different he says father i know that you hear me always and because of all these who are here that's why i'm telling you this now and then he looked at the grave of lazarus and said and then said lazarus come forth and lazarus came forth every time he prayed he mentioned the father father glorify thyself and the father said immediately i've glorified that name and i'll glorify it again and then what now he told us how to pray he said a father which art in heaven he prayed like nobody else and he taught prayer like nobody else and you'll find out in john he says whatsoever you ask the father in my name that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son ask and he shall receive seek and ye shall find nor can it shall be open unto you immediately says everybody that here receiveth and everybody that asks receives everybody that seeks finds and everybody that knocks it shall be open unto you then he said which of you being a father and you have a son if your son shall ask your bread will you give him a stone if you then being evil know how to give good things to children how much more shall your father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him is the one that taught us to pray to the father and then it makes prayer very simple prayer is the heart to heart communion communication with god beyond the sound of our words in prayer and beyond anything we can say our thoughts are very important our attitude is very important and the desires we have in our hearts they are very important they give meaning to the words we say and then when we pray it means then we look at our motive our desire our ambition and everything we have within the heart at disposition otherwise our prayer will just be like babbling or the babblings of a hypocrite can i explain that to you as we come back to this prayer look at this it says our father which art in heaven before you can say our you must have an unselfish attitude you cannot say our if you're living a selfish self-centered life living only for yourself and then you cannot say father our father you cannot say father if you have not been born again if your name is not in the book of life and if you have if you are not in the in the list of the children of god in god's family you cannot say our father which art in heaven if you never think about heaven if you never have any treasure in heaven if your heart your interest is not in heaven do you see what we're saying it is not just the word for the words to be meaningful our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name if you are blaspheming the name of god every day by your attitude by your action in your words and everything that you do how can you say or not glorified be thy name neither can you say thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven if you are deliberately contradicting opposing and disobeying the will of god you see before you can say those words there must be an attitude a disposition a desire a behavior a conduct a character that was showing for that shows that now you can actually sincerely pray that prayer you cannot say thy kingdom come if you never work for that kingdom if you never desire that kingdom if you're building an empire a 
a kingdom for yourself here if you exalt yourself as a king almost as the king of kings and the lord of lords and you're not expecting another kingdom to come how can you pray that kingdom come you cannot say that will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven if he has revealed this will to you and you say no i'm not going to take that i'm not going to follow that you know the mind of god you know the will of god but you're never obeying how can you say that will be done in earth as it is in heaven you cannot say give us this day our daily bread if you're trying to get your daily bread in a dubious way in a satanic way and in a way of the sinners before you can say give us this day our daily bread it means that you want to get that bread in a righteous way in a holy way and in a way that is not contradictory to the word of god you cannot say forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors if you are very hard-hearted tough-hearted and then you never forgive anyone you want to take the pound of flesh from the person that has offended you until you retaliate until you revenge you'll never stop and then you have that bitterness and malice in your heart how can you then pray forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors you cannot say lead us not into temptation if you are deliberately putting yourself in the way of temptation you see it's your attitude it's what you do it is your life your lifestyle that will qualify you to pray this kind of prayer neither can you say deliver us from evil if you're in covenant with the evil one if you're in a cult and then you have this a covenant agreement with the evil one how can you put yourself put your neck in the yoke and put yourself in the cage of captivity and then at the same time you are hypocritically saying deliver us from evil neither can you say thine is the kingdom if you say the kingdom is mine i am the lord here i'm the ruler the controller of my life how can you say thine is the kingdom and the power if you believe in the power of satan how can you say thine is the power if you believe in the power of the people of the world how can you say thine is the power and the glory how can you say the glory belongs to god when you are trying to get glory for yourself and when you are trying to get the honor the praise of men you see before you can pray this prayer you must have a heart that is changed a heart that is transformed a heart that is giving all the glory to god neither can you say forever how can you say forever when you don't even think of the future you're not thinking of eternity you're not thinking of any future forever and then you're saying forever the words will have no meaning neither can you say amen if you don't believe what you have said neither can you say amen if you don't believe that god has power to do everything that you have asked him every word in this prayer actually hinges on your attitude every word in this prayer hinges on your obedience to the word of god every word in this prayer hinges on the very fact that you are a child of god and you believe all these things in your heart in your mind in your disposition in your character and it shows that's why we're looking at this prayer we're going to look at verses 9 and 10 today look at your bible in matthew chapter 6 verses 9 and verses 9 and 10 those are the words we're looking at today after this manner therefore pray ye let me remind you once again you don't find jesus christ repeating this prayer anytime it's just a pattern it's just a model it's just an example it's just an illustration it's just a guide to tell us after this manner not exactly in these words after this manner pray ye which means look at the look at the prayer look at the model look at the details there look at the pattern and look at the way everything is structured and then you follow that pattern what's the prayer it says our father which art in heaven already we looked at that in the first study on the lord's prayer you remember the focus on god you remember the fatherhood of god that was studied at that time saying that we're praying to the heavenly father now we come to hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven i pray the will of god will be done in your life when that will of God is done, you'll be the happiest man, the happiest woman on earth. Your life will be fulfilled. And then you will know I'm in the center of the perfect will of God. It will happen to you.
Let's pick them up one by one. Number one, sanctifying the name of God. That's point number one, sanctifying the name of God. Number two, supplication for the reign of God, for him to be king and for the kingdom to come. Supplication, that's a prayer, supplication for the reign of God. Number three, submission to the will of God that will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. Let's come back to number one, sanctifying the name of God. It says in Matthew chapter six, verse nine, after this manner, therefore pray ye, a father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does that mean? The Greek word for that word, hallowed, means holy be thy name. It means sanctified, set apart, be thy name. It means exalted, highly honored, be thy name. And it means glory, be to your name. That's what it means, hallowed be thy name. Honored be thy name, exalted be thy name, uplifted be thy name, holy, sanctified, set apart, be thy name. To handle the name of God is to count that name sacred. And it is to set that name apart so that we hold it as a matchless name of the almighty God in reverence. To handle the name of God is to honor that name, to esteem that name, to reverence that name, to adore that name as divine, as infinitely higher than any other name on earth or even in heaven. It means that we make no mention of any other name of any other God. And it means that we always praise the Lord and call upon his name. The clearing is doing among the people making mention that his name is exalted and let me show you something there are people that do, they just say hallowed be thy name and they don't understand and every other thing they do is actually dishonoring the name of the lord defiling the name of the lord polluting the name of the lord and it's actually contradicting the prayer they pray when they say hallowed be thy name in leviticus chapter 22 i'm reading to you from verse 32 leviticus chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 32 leviticus 22 32 neither shall ye profane my holy name but i'll be hallowed among the children of israel i am the lord which hallow you you see the word hallow there and then you see the combination of other words that makes you to know what it means to hallow the name of god it says neither shall ye profane my holy name i will be hallowed among the children of israel very simple when you hallow the name of the lord you will not profane the name of the lord you will not defile the name of the lord you will not blaspheme the name of the lord you will not trample upon the name of the lord you exalt that name you honor that name you lift up that name and you beautify glorify that name now remember to hold, to hallow the name of the lord is not to defile not to profane and not to disregard that name leviticus chapter 19 verse 12 leviticus chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 12 it says and ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall ye profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. It is this before, don't profane the name so you can hallow the name. Now it combines profaning with uh, swearing by his name falsely. That means that if you're going to hallow the name of the Lord, you will not swear falsely. You will not tell a lie and then make the name of God to witness to you to say God is my witness. Well, you know you are telling a lie. If you are going to hallow the name of the Lord, honor the name of the Lord, you make that name only support what is true, what is honest, what is faithful, what is right. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 6. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 6 They shall be holy unto their God And not profane the name of their God Already I read to you To hallow the name of the Lord Is not to profane the name of the Lord And not to profane the name of the Lord Is to be holy When your life is holy And people are thanking God for And they say I thank God for brother so and so It's so different today 
It's such a gentle fellow now. You are hallowing the name of God because they're glorifying God on your behalf. I praise God for sister so and so. Her life is just a great challenge to me. Her humility, her gentleness is such a great challenge to me. You are hallowing the name of the Lord, honoring the name of the Lord because of the behavior of that sister. That's why it says, they shall be holy unto their God. God and not profane the name of the Lord their God. And then we read in Deuteronomy chapter 20, chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And I'm reading there from verse 20. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20. But the prophet we shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, when somebody stands up and then he utters something false, something deceitful, something dishonest, and he puts the name of God there and he says, thus says the Lord. This is a revelation, this is a prophecy, it's coming from the Lord. He says, when somebody tells a lie, and he calls it a prophecy coming from the Lord. That fellow has profaned the name of the Lord. That fellow will die. That means that if you're going to honor the name of the Lord, hallow the name of the Lord, you will not prophesy any false dream, any false prophecy, any false vision. And then be calling that in the name of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 25. Jeremiah 23. Reading from verse 25, if you honor the name of the Lord, you are not going to tell lies in his name. You are not going to utter a false prophecy by his name. Jeremiah 23, reading from verse 25, here is what it says. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name. Prophets are supposed to honor the name of the Lord, hallow the name of the Lord, exalt the name of the Lord. But these prophets, I'm hearing what they're saying. And they speak lies. And they speak those lies in my name. Saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. You see, when somebody is saying that he's doing that, I had a dream. Add a vision, add a revelation, everything is a lie. It's just the imagination of his heart. And he puts the name of God there. He's not honoring the name of God. He's not hallowing the name of God. He's not exalting the name of God. He says in verse 27, which thing to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. You see, that person is not, not, not honoring the name of God when he makes people to forget the truths of the Bible by their dreams. They substitute the word with the dream, with the vision, or with their revelation. I had a dream. I have a vision. I have a revelation. And then the people by and by they forget the word of the Lord. Such a fellow that is saying that dream, relating that dream, that revelation is actually despising the name of the Lord, polluting the name of the Lord, profaning the name of the Lord. It says in verse 27, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. You see, it's like you said, it's like those who worship idols. And they are now worshiping the idol of Baal. That's what their fathers did. They have forgotten my real name, my real nature, my exaltation, and my glory, and my honor. And now they're exalting the name of an idol. They have forgotten my word. They have forgotten my glory. And now they're exalting their false dream and their false prophecies. They are not honoring the name of the Lord. You see, many people don't understand. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. And after that, they tell a lie. After that, they relate a false dream. After that, they relate a false, a false revelation. After that, they preach false doctrine. And then they say, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. They think it's when you bend down, you hallow the name of the Lord. They think when you kneel a little, then you are hallowing or you are honoring the name of the Lord. No. It's more than that. It means when the truth of God is your mouth. 
when the truth of God is in your heart and when the revelation of the Almighty supersedes any other revelation that you think you have, you honor the name of the Lord. It says in verse 30, Therefore, behold, I'm against the prophet, says the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I'm against the prophet, says the Lord, that use their tongue and say, He saith, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err, to go astray by, the, by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit these people at all, says the Lord. You know, so what the Lord is saying. If you're going to hallow the name of the Lord, it means that you respect that name. It means you will not blaspheme that name. It means you will not call that name in vain. It means you will not encourage other people to call the name of the Lord in vain. In uh, Exodus chapter 20 verse 7. Exodus chapter 20. It is from verse 7. Honoring the name of the Lord. Exalting the name of the Lord. Hallowing the name of the Lord. Exodus 20 verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Honor his name. Hallow that name. Exalt that name sanctify that name glorify that name and do not take the name of the lord thy god in vain for the lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain that's the reason why you want to be very careful so that whatever you do whatever you say people are not blaspheming the name of the lord through you and that's what the that's what the israelites did you know the israelites and there's something you'll know about you or you ought to know about them they thought they respected god and they thought they honored and hallowed the name of God. They will not even call the name of God directly. They will not call Jehovah directly. And, uh, you know, they, they just substitute another word because they say the name is so great and the name is so mighty that our mouths are so little we cannot even form, a, you know, kind of pronounce that name. Not that they could not pronounce it. They thought that was respect. They thought that was honor. Meanwhile, while they thought they were honoring the name of the Lord, their character, their behavior, their conduct, their imagination, and their interaction, everything they did was actually kind of a defiling the name of the Lord, polluting the name of the Lord, profaning the name of the Lord. Look at the comment about the enemy in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, I'm reading to you there from verse 24. Uh, their, their attitude actually dishonored the Lord. They thought they were honoring the Lord because they will not pronounce the name. But look at it in Romans chapter 2, verse 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. If your behavior in your community makes people to say, Ah, uh ah, -uh, but you're a church man now. Why are you beating your wife? Oh, you want to kill this woman? I thought you go to church. I thought you people, you are reading the Bible. Even those of us who don't go to church, who are not as wicked as this. That means you make people to blaspheme the name of the Lord. If you steal. And then people say, I wasn't expecting or find this sin in your house, in your hand. You're a church man. You're a church woman. How could you have done this? And then cooperate with some believers to do this. With son that you are a holy, holy, righteous child of God. You blaspheme the name of the Lord when you do anything. Maybe you meet, uh, you know, some of these uh, people on the road and, and uh, they ask you for something. And then you say, well, I'm sorry that, uh, you know, what I have is not complete. You say, okay, pack your car and stay there. And then you, so you come to him and say, okay, please uh, manage this for me. How much is that? Uh, just uh, 100 naira. Ah, go and stand there. Uh, please, this is all I have. And then you say, they say, okay, from where are you? I'm coming from church. Ah, which church? Deeper life. Ah, are you giving us bribe? Deeper life people, they will stay there for three hours. They not give us bribe. You, you are not genuine. You are not real deeper life. You are the one just following after them. You dishonor the name of the Lord. Even when unbelievers tell you that you are not for real. 
because of you they blaspheme the name of the lord you cannot then say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name when your character when your conduct when your behavior is dishonoring that name in isaiah chapter 29 i'm reading from verse 23 isaiah chapter 29 and we're looking at verse 23 isaiah 29 verse 23 here is what it says, but when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands, in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name. You know what that means? They shall honor my name. No, they shall preserve my name as holy, as sacred, as exalted. That's how to hallow the name of the Lord. They shall sanctify my name. It says, and then it goes on and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred, they also that went astray in the past, in spirit shall come to understand. And they, sh they that murmured shall learn doctrine. When there's no more murmuring, no more complaining, and no more infighting, no more strife, no more conflict. That's honoring the name of the Lord. That's how to hallow the name of the Lord. Hey, let's look at Psalm 111. You shouldn't forget this one. Psalm 111. And you'll see what the name of the Lord is. Psalm 111, verse 9. He sent redemption unto his people. And he has commanded that his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. That's how to hallow the name of the Lord. You don't compete with God for respect. You don't compete with God for honor. And you don't compete with God for reverence. You allow him to just have the reverence and the holiness and then and the exaltation. Holy and reverend be on be his name or is his name. It tells us in Psalm 29, verse 2. Psalm 29. And I'm reading there from verse 2. It says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. That's how to hallow the name of the Lord. That's how to honor the name of the Lord. That's how to sanctify, exalt, counter sacred the name of the Lord. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. That's honoring the name. And then he tells us in Psalm 86. Psalm 86. And I'm reading from verse 9 all through to verse 11. Verse 9. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. You see that? That is honoring the name. Shall glorify thy name. That is hallowing the name. Honoring the name. Exalting the name. Counting the name as sacred. It says, they shall glorify thy name for thou art great. And doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name, to respect thy name, to honor thy name, to count your name as sacred. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 36. Hallow the name of the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 36, reading from verse 21. Ezekiel 36 verse 21 but I had pity on uh, for my holy name which the children with the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen whether they went the Lord said he wanted to defend his name protect his name honor his name that's why he said I had pity on my holy name which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen whither they went Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not this for your sake, so house of Israel, but for mine own holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. The Lord wanted to prove himself among the heathen. And then he said, children of Israel, I'm working this miracle. I'm giving this deliverance. I'm rescuing you again from where you've been. Not because you're good, not because of anything, but to be able to pro protect my name and to make that name holy. And I will sanctify my great name. That's what God is saying. He said, you have not done it, I'll do it myself. I'll sanctify. 
I will glorify, I will exalt my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your land then i will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you why will he do that to glorify his name to protect the honor of his name and to sanctify his name in verse 26 the new heart also will i give you why to glorify his name that the people, the heathen, they may know that the name of God is exalted, high and holy. A new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Why? Why will he do that? For the heathen to see the remarkable change, the remarkable transformation. That these people are the trophies of God's purifying agent. And because of that, you'll say, if God can do this, this God must be great. In verse 27, I will put in my, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I give unto your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. I pray that will happen to us. In 2 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we're reading from verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundations, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's how to hallow the name of the Lord. That's how to honor the name of the Lord. That's how to glorify the name of the Lord. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 6. Now you understand. A father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How do you hallow his name? By bending down? No. By kneeling down? Not really. By your character. By your disposition. By your behavior. When you do things that people say, thank God for what God can do in the life of a man, in the life of a woman to make such a great change, transformation in the life of this person, you are honoring that name. And when in your tongue, in your language, you beautify that name, you glorify that name, and you say things that are honest and truthful and good, that's hallowing the name, that's honoring, that's lifting up the name, exalting the name. When you worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, that is honoring that name, hallowed be thy name. Now we come to the next one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. What a great message you have there. What a great revelation you have there. What a great prayer. Thy kingdom come. To pray that kingdom come shows a desire for the arrival of God's kingdom by a person who is completely dissatisfied with all the kingdoms of the world. If anybody is saying that kingdom come, it means that he has looked at the kingdoms of the world. There's a deep dissatisfaction. He looks at the political situation in his own country, in our country here. You look at the political situation and you look at the oppression and you see the kingdoms of men. You say, Lord, this is not meeting our needs. This is not helping us. This is not encouraging anyone. The economy is going from bad to worse. They give a lot of promises and nothing is ever done. Lord, thy kingdom come. Then you read the news, current affairs, and you look at the countries of the world where the people appear to be enlightened. And then you hear about the West, you hear about Europe, about America, and all those places that they're supposed to know to do right. And then you hear some of the things happening 
having the oppression and then the, uh, the sicknesses and the evil things they'll say Lord what are we waiting for Lord thy kingdom come there is a dissatisfaction in your heart for the kingdoms of the people of the world and that's why you are praying the prayer thy kingdom come the one who prays thy kingdom come has experienced the peace of the kingdom in his own heart and because of the peace of the kingdom which he has experienced in his heart he said how I wish that this peace of the kingdom will reach every family will reach every community will reach every country will reach the whole world and therefore he says so Lord there's one prayer I have because of the peace of the kingdom I enjoy in my heart I want that to spread throughout the whole world thy kingdom come I want to tell you something if somebody is praying this prayer it will not be somebody who is a proud of his own earthly kingdom if somebody is let's say for example a politician and he's saying we have arrived we're doing the very best there is nothing better than what we're doing everybody is suffering everybody is crying everybody is saying why is the government like this why is this kingdom like this and that fellow there sitting on that uh, in that uh, whatever he calls it in the state house or whatever he says this is the best that ever happened in the whole world those people will not be able to pray thy kingdom come let me show daniel chapter 4 in daniel chapter 4 i'm reading to you from verse 13. The kinds of people that will never be able to pray thy kingdom come. In Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 13. Here it says in verse 13, the king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom of my, by my, by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Such a person like this can never pray thy kingdom come. He was so proud of Babylon. He was so proud of the kingdom of Babylon. And then he looked around and said, It's not this my kingdom, a great kingdom. I built it by the might of my power. Because of the attitude they had, full of self and full of pride of the earthly kingdom, he'll never be able to pray, Thy kingdom come. Who are the people that can pray thy kingdom come? John chapter 18. In John chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 36. John chapter 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Only Jesus can pray thy kingdom come. Only the disciples of Jesus can pray that kingdom come. Only the followers of Jesus can pray that kingdom come. Only the people that have the mind of Christ, the vision of Christ, the desire of Christ. Only those people can pray that kingdom come. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. The kingdom you get by fighting. If you are satisfied with that, and you have a great army, a mighty army, to subdue other nations and to get their lands from them and to get their oil, their mineral resources from them and to oppress them and to get rid of them by fighting. If you are like that, you'll never be able to pray thy kingdom come because you have the kingdom of force already. And the kingdom acquired by violence already. You'll not be able to pray thy kingdom come. But you know, those of us who are here, and you are for peace. You are a peacemaker and a peace lover. And you see the violence all over the world. And you see how they kill one another to be able to get on the throne of their kingdom. You are saying, oh Lord, when will your kingdom come? We're fed up with these people just wasting lives and killing lives and killing people just because they want to get maybe their oil or they want to get their mineral resources or they want to get their land or they want to get their property or get position. Just kill people. You say, Lord, this is the kingdom of the world and our kingdom is not of this world. That's why you have a heart, a desire, a passion and you're saying, Lord, thy kingdom come. Let's look at um, 2 Samuel chapter 15. Second Samuel chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 10. In Second Samuel chapter 15 verse 10, But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. That's another kingdom. You see Absalom, he wanted a kingdom here on earth, and he wanted to depose and dethrone his father. 
And he didn't care, you know, the milk of a, of a family affection had dried up in Absalom's heart. All he wanted was just a kingdom here. And it didn't matter if he killed his father to have that kingdom. Such people cannot pray, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Because already they want their own personal kingdom. And even if they have to depose or dethrone their father to have that kingdom, this is what I want. Such people cannot pray thy kingdom come. I'm telling you something. Many people go to church on Sunday. And then every Sunday, they rise up. And many of them, they want to steal from other people, oppress other people, destroy other people, so that they can have what belongs to other people. Many of them are like Absalom. Many of them like Nebuchadnezzar. And then, they will, before they go away from church, every Sunday, a father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. No, you cannot say that. You cannot say that. Well, the covetousness in the heart, you cannot say that. Well, the moderate spirit, wanting to destroy other people, to build an empire, a kingdom here. Wanting to build a kingdom on the blood of other people. You cannot say thy kingdom come. Uh, look at first, uh, second kings, uh, first kings rather, first kings chapter 1. In 1 Kings chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggis, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. That, that's enough. That's enough. I will be king. Whatever it will take. Whatever I have to give for it. Whatever I will have to do. David the king was still alive and here was actually Adonijah was the he was another child a junior brother to Absalom he knew what had happened to Absalom and he said it doesn't matter my brother Absalom was not lucky enough and he died and he lost his life but who killed Absalom? Joab killed Absalom. All right. I know what to do. Then he used some methods to get Joab on his side. Because a Joab is so dangerous to Absalom, and Joab then made that war and killed Absalom, I know what you do. You know the people that are scheming, and the people that are planning. And then they have looked at why other people failed, other people could not get what they wanted, and they say, I'm going to avoid that trap, that pit hole, and that whatever, so that I'll be able to get it. You cannot pray thy kingdom come. When you have that mind, let me read it for you. In that first Kings chapter 1, reading from verse 5, it says, Then Adonijah, the son of Haggis, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why? As thou done so, he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. His mother bare him after Absalom. The same spirit in Absalom was in his heart. And then it says, And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and, Ab and uh, Abiathar, the priest. And they following Adonijah helped him. Do you see here, you know, the kind of method that he used? That I know Adonijah is dangerous if I don't get him on my side. If Adonijah stays with my father David and is a kind of loyal to him, I'll never be able to make it. Therefore, he got Joab on his side. There are people that do that and they investigate and they find out and then they say, that man is dangerous. If I don't get him on my side, that lady there, very powerful and influential, if I don't get her on my side and they get all this people on their side, and now they want to have a kingdom. You cannot pray thy kingdom come when you are like that. Because you already have this sin in your heart. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 26. Now this case now. This is the case of a man that is called Jeroboam. In 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart. Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. This man again he was scheming. He was saying now I've got this one. I'm going to hold on to it. This is my chance. This is my opportunity. These people are on my side now. I have a kingdom. 
I don't want this kingdom to ever end. And I don't want another kingdom to come. And so we are told, you said, now the kingdom shall return uh, to the house of David. If these people go up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of these people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. Wherefore, whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem he acted as if was pitching their condition it's a long distance to leave your community and leave your tribe and go to Jerusalem to go and worship this is too much I'm thinking about your convenience he was thinking about his own kingdom to preserve them and so he said he said behold thy god o israel which brought thee out of the land of egypt and he said the one in bethel and the other put he in dan and this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto dan he set idols for them and he changed their concept of serving God. And he said, this is enough for you. You know, there are people that do that. It's too much for you to go to the central church. It's too much for you to go to the combined service. Why don't you, what we're doing here in our little corner, in our district, is this not enough? That's another Rehoboam. He, he, he wants to have a kingdom. And when you want to have a kingdom like that, and you are dissuading people to go to Jerusalem, and you are saying it's too much for you to go that long journey, what you are doing is you want your own kingdom, your own empire, and you will never be able to pray thy kingdom come. Who are the people that can pray thy kingdom come? And pray it with sincerity of heart. Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14 and verse 15. Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Preaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Those are the people that have the king Jesus reigning in their hearts. They have repented. They have turned away from their sin. And they believe the gospel as a result of that. The king is within them and now because of the kingdom of peace and the kingdom of righteousness in their heart the kingdom of joy they can now pray thy kingdom come in Romans chapter, chapter 14 Romans chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 17 Romans 14 reading from verse 17 here it tells us for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost when you have repented the peace of God comes to your heart the righteousness that comes by faith is implanted in you and then you have this joy in the Lord and because you say if I'm feeling this joy like this and I have this righteousness and this peace like this what will happen if Christ the King of Kings will come and then he will establish his kingdom on the earth here if I can feel such rest and relaxation and peace in my heart just having salvation imagine what will happen when Christ comes to reign and establishes his kingdom here oh lord thy kingdom come that's why they pray that prayer because of the foretaste of that kingdom in their heart already that's why they are praying thy kingdom come in fact this person is so happy with the kingdom of god and then because of the abundance that that kingdom will supply that's why he's saying thy kingdom come in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 33. It says here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You understand what it says? It says you as a person, individual. 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this things shall be added unto you. Now you look at your life. Since you became a believer, and since the kingdom of God was the primary and the uh, appropriate thing in your life, seeking the kingdom and seeking the kingdom, and then you got healed. Seeking the kingdom, you got blessed. Seeking the kingdom, all the other things you were desiring, everything just came like that. Then you are thinking, hmm, if everybody will have this kingdom, I have this kingdom, I have healed. I have this kingdom, I have joy. I have this kingdom, I have miracle. I have this kingdom, I have all these things added unto me. If everybody on earth will have this kingdom, what will happen? The millennium will come. Because then he will just bless everybody. There will be no famine. And there will be, no, be no war anymore. Everything will just be wonderful. If it is going to be like that, oh Lord, let it come now. Thy kingdom come. That's why we pray that prayer. Because of what we enjoy in our personal lives, in our family lives, and because of the abundant supply for the people who are in the kingdom now, who have the kingdom of God in their heart, and we're saying, Oh Lord, if it is like this, just for me, when the kingdom has not even come, oh Lord, I want the kingdom to come. Thy kingdom come, and that kingdom will come. I said it will come. And when it eventually comes, look at the final result. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 15. Revelation 11 verse 15. It's coming. It says, and the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our, of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Give me a good amen. amen. Do you, you understand what it means now? Uh, let me just illustrate for you. Right now you have uh, somebody who is the president in the United States of America. World power. And yet, you know, being a president in the United States of America doesn't mean there is peace everywhere. You know what is happening in Iraq? You know what's happening in Iran? You know, if, if you have heard about uh, North, uh, Northern Korea, and if you have heard about uh, Lebanon and all those places, if you've heard about Afghanistan, now you understand what America is doing, a great world power. But there's a president, there's a king over there. And then you know what's happening in, you know, in Europe, in France, in Germany, and all those places. Somebody is sitting up there, and it's, you know, it's, you know they're, they're raining. And they see all the things that we're going through in Nigeria, here we have a kingdom we have a country we have constitution we have a president you and uh, you know we just came out of the strike you know we came out of all these uh, petrol or something even though we produce a lot of petrol in the country see what we're going through and then somebody is saying who do you prefer the president of America or King Jesus. If King Jesus were to reign and then he has all the kingdoms of the world under his authority, there will be no war in Iraq. There will be no war in Iran. There will be no bloodshed. All the guns and all the ammunition will be just put into plowshares. There will just be abundant supply with everybody because it's the prince of peace. That's why we're praying the prayer, thy kingdom come. We're dissatisfied with the kingdoms of the world because there's no satisfaction, there's no supply. We're suffering even though the money is there and all those things are there because of the people ruling and they're human beings we cannot blame them. They cannot do more than they're doing but we know that when jesus comes i want jesus to come lord jesus come he's our king he's our lord he's our redeemer that's why we're praying our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come it will come and now we come to point number three submission to the will of god submission to the will of God. Now you know what the Lord is telling us, he's saying in, um, he's telling us in Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading to you from verse reading from verse 9 again after this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven I want you to understand something about the will of God thy will be done that's more than thy will be known no way there are many people that know the will of God they are not doing it they will be taught 
There are many people that teach the will of God. They are not doing it. They will be desired. There are many people that say, Lord, I want to know your will. Lord, I want to know your will. And when they know that will, they're not able to do it. It's more than knowing it, more than desiring it, more than teaching it. It's not that they will be believed. There are many people that say, believe in the will of God. They are not doing it. Or they will be learned. More about Jesus, let me learn. Most, more of his only will to discern. There are many people that discern and learn. And they are not doing it. And then it says, it's not like, they will be preached. There are many people preaching it, they are not doing it. The important thing about the will of God is not just to know it, do it. It's not just to teach it, to do it. And it is not just to desire it, it's to do it. And it's not just to believe it or learn it or preach it. It's to do. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. God desires that his will will be done by each of his children on earth. By all believers in Christ. By the whole church on earth. By all people on earth. As it is done by all the angels in heaven. God's desire and Christ's provision through his full redemption. Is that each of us will know that will and do that will without interruption as the angels of God are doing that will in heaven. This is proof that actually holiness and sanctification is the will of God. Now as we're talking about the will of God, you understand what he actually wants us to do when he says that will be done in earth. While you are here, as it is done in heaven. Who are the people doing the will of God in heaven? Do you know them? I said, who are those that do the will of God in heaven? Angels, angels. And then it says, we should do the will of God here on earth as angels are doing it in heaven. In Psalm 103, Psalm 103. We're reading from verse 19 to verse 21. The Lord has prepared his throne in heaven, in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. That do his commandments, that do his will, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. That he is his ministers, that is those angels in heaven, they do the will of God. And he wants us to do the will of God as well. We'll do that will of God. Actually, you know, the only thing that matters is actually doing that will. Whatever you profess... Whatever testimony you give, whatever you tell us you are, I know this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If you're not doing the will of God, that is not commendable in the sight of God. Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Now, everyone that's not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but she that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It's not everybody saying, Lord, Lord, that will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But they that do the will of my Father who is in heaven, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That's not as important as doing the will of God. And in thy name have cast out devils. That's not as important as doing the will of God. And in thy name I've done many wonderful works. That's not as important as doing the will of God. Then he says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. First John chapter 2. In first John chapter 2, reading from verse 15. First John chapter 2 verse 15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You will abide forever. To do the will of God. That's what God wants. If we say we're saved, we're born again, we're children of God. The mark, the evidence is that we're doing the will of God. And that will make us live forever. How do we do that will? We do it from our heart. From the very depth of our heart. It's not lip service unto the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6. Not with eye service as men pleasers. But as the servants of Christ, doing the will of 
God from the heart. Doing the will of God from the heart. You love it. You desire it. You cherish it. And you're doing that will voluntarily. And you're doing it sincerely. Doing the will of God from the heart. And uh, you know, if you're wondering, but oh, what's that will? How do I know that will? First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. You see that? That's the will of God. If you're wondering, what's the will of God? Sanctification. What's the will of God? Holiness. What's the will of God? Purity of heart. What's the meaning of that? It means anything that is contrary to holiness is not the will of God. Anything that is contrary to purity of heart is not the will of God. Anything that is contrary to sincerity, honesty, that's not the will of God. Anything that is contrary to the you know, circumcision of heart, that's not the will of God. Anything that is contrary to humility of heart and life, that's not the will of God. For this is your, the, your, your, the will of God, even your sanctification. We're told in Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present yourselves, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. What's the will of God in verse 1? That you present your body unto God, a living sacrifice that is holy. Holiness is the will of God. Anything unholy, anything unclean, anything defiling, anything immoral, it's not the will of God. And then it says, be not conformed to this world. Then we understand conformity to the world. That's not the will of God. When you are doing engagement, conformity to the world. That's not the will of God. You know, the engagements that people do, and they say, we're following the word of God, we're following the doctrine of the Bible, we're following the will of God. And then with all the spraying of the money, that's, not, that's conformity to the world. With all those there, videos and cameras and things, that's not the will of God. Anything you're doing, and all the lies they tell, we're coming from Japan. We're coming from Ivory Coast. We're coming from France. We just came today and they came from the backyard over there. That's not the will of God. All those lies. That's what they do in the world. Getting into debt. Because of wedding. That's not the will of God. The will of God is that you are not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and accepted and perfect will of God. Well, you know something? We should understand what the will of God is. And then we should submit, surrender to that will. If you are praying the prayer that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Let's look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 21. Acts chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 10. And as we tarried there many days, there, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle. And shall deliver him unto the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Look up here. Let me tell you the background of this story. The Lord had called Paul. From the very first day he called Paul, he said, I will show him what great things he will suffer for my sake. He knew that persecution would be there. And in some cases, he said, I take pleasure in persecution, in reproaches, because when I'm weak, then am I strong? And now Agabus came to this place, and Paul the apostle was preparing to go to Jerusalem. And then Agabus took his girdle, that means his belt, and he tied himself up. And he said, tell me, who has this girdle, this belt? And he said, is this man Paul? He said this, when he goes to Jerusalem, this is how they will bind him. They will persecute him. And then they said, we of that place, they of that place, and we, his companions, we pleaded with him. 
We told him, please, don't go. Don't go to Jerusalem. And then Paul answered and said, What me ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am, not I am I'm ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. See that. Paul the apostle said, Why are you people weeping? That's a contract I signed to serve the Lord in pain or pleasure, in adversity or in abundance. In every situation, every condition, I've already willed my life to serve the Lord. Why are you weeping to discourage me? Now, you know, before I read the next verse to you, people today, those who pray, thy will be done. You know what they will do? They will see the road that Paul was going to take. They'll go and block that road. They say, if you will not hear, we'll take practical step. Deliberately. And he'll block the road. And then when Paul now gets there, he'll, he goes there, the road is blocked. He goes there, the road, and they will just go back to their houses. They block the road. And then they'll say, let him go. He wants to go. He wants to go and die. He will not go. We'll tell him that if he will not hear words, he will hear method. Practical method. They'll block the road. That's what people do today. Once they don't have their will fulfilled, and the Paul and the leader or the pastor or anybody say, no, this is what I'm going to do. Because this is the will of God for me. Well, we counseled him, we spoke to him, he will not hear. They will do other things to make him not go. But these people, look at what he did in verse 14. And when he would not be persuaded, we see saying, the will of the Lord be done. That's how you can pray. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. But if you're always wanting somebody to bend to your will, to bend to your way, and whenever they are not doing what you want, you'll do some other things methodically to make them crumble, to make them submit and surrender. Not to God, but to you. You cannot pray that will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. But you see these believers in the Bible, they understood. They said, if that is so, that's all right. Then they said, the will of the Lord be done. Come to marriage. Somebody says, there's a person the Lord is leading me to marry. And you, in your own innocence and sincerity, you say, no, this is not right. How can you marry this person? This is not okay. Because the way you judge, you think that's not the will of God. And the fellow goes back to pray. And then he prays again. And then he says, you know, my brother, I understand your concern. My sister, you are my mother in the Lord. I understand your concern. But this is the person I'm going to marry. This is the will of God for me. You know what others will do? They want to block the way. They say, we well, spoken to her, she doesn't want to hear. We well, spoken to him, he doesn't want to hear. They'll take some methods so that this person will not do what she knows to be the will of God. But you know these people, after they tried to convince Paul, and Paul said, no, this is what I believe the will of God is for me. I know bounds and afflictions, they await me there. But none of these things move me. I'm still going. They said, the will of the Lord be done. You know what happens today? So-called sister D says that this brother is the will of God. And the brother said, no, sister E is the will of God for me. And then this sister D, so-called, will be going to that brother. See, you are missing it. If you miss me, you meet, you miss your bone. Bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. You understand? And the brother said, please, don't trouble. Don't come again. Go and be praying. This sister E is the will of God for me. And then eventually, when they are going to get married, I'm so surprised that this D, I don't want to call her sister, she will come. And then as they say, they are giving them gifts. She will wrap up something that is demonic. She will wrap up something. You say it's a gift. And then as they are dropping gifts, you say you are going to marry that he. I'm the one you should marry. But you are going away from me. You want to go and marry that other person. I will poison that marriage. And then they'll put some gifts there. As those people, young couple, innocent, they come home and they begin to unwrap the gifts. Then somebody will, you know, they unwrap something and then they see a knife. They see blade. 
they see machete. And they who gave this one, and there's no name there. They give this, they give this, and when you trace everything, it is D. Who said, this man is the will of God. And to disrupt that will of God, he has now planted something. You kill one another. You use blade knife, kill one another. And she says she's a Christian, sitting down there. Why don't you just surrender? The man said, this is the will of God for me. The will of the Lord be done. Go your way. God will find my own will for me. That's Christianity. But you know the things that people are practicing today, they must have their own way. And you cannot come and pray, thy will be done. You are not submissive to the will of God. Things will change. We will submit to the will of God. If something is coming your way and then it doesn't come, the will of the Lord be done. If they wanted to give you something and then they didn't give you again, don't worry about that. The will of the Lord be done. Instead of all these mechanical methods and magical methods and the kind of occultic methods that people are using, you will not be like that. Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 20 and verse 21. Acts chapter 18, verse 20, verse 21. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not. But he made them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you. If God will. When you make promises, if God God will. I will return again unto you. If God will. You know there are people that will take us up. Those of us who are ministers. The pastor said he will be coming. And then he's not coming now. I saw they said we're teaching holiness and sanctification. Why is it that the pastor said he is coming and we have not seen him. Oh yes we're teaching sanctification. But the will of God is still there. The pastor doesn't own his life. And it cannot be in every place at the same time. Of course, I want to be everywhere. I want to come to you. I want to come to you. I want to come to them. But if, if God will. But you know what people do? Then they begin to fight. They begin to contradict. They begin to do, say a lot of things. Gossip and backbite. Almost to destroy the minister. And to destroy the church. Because he said it was coming. If the Lord will. You see, we need to understand the will of God. And if we're going to pray this prayer, then we understand everything we want to do, everything we're planning is subject to the will of God. And we're not maneuvering anything. We're not kind of, a, a kind of doing anything that will show that we just want to have our own will, our own way. By all means, Colossians chapter 4. In Colossians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salutes you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. My prayer for you is that you will be perfect. You will be in the will of God. And the will of God will bear wonderful fruit in your life in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 6 as we round up. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading together now. Get set, get ready. We're reading together this Lord's Prayer. Uh, everybody now, we're reading together. Read after me. I'll read and you'll, you'll pronounce what I say. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we we'll forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever. And everybody said... You are blessed already. The will of God will be fulfilled in your life. Sorrow is gone. Daily bread, provision, he'll provide for you. Next week, I'm going to deal with that. Give us this day our daily bread. Get ready when you come next week. No poverty again. Abundance. Come into your life. 
Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want your kingdom. You are my heavenly father. And you love me. I'm your child. And I know that things are going to change from now on. Lord, I want to honor your name. I want to glorify your name. I want to exalt your name. You tell the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm for you and you are for me. Your kingdom come. The kingdom of peace, your kingdom come. Your kingdom of power, the kingdom come. The kingdom of majesty, your kingdom come. Your kingdom of righteousness, your kingdom come. Let it come in my heart now. Let that kingdom come in my family. Let the kingdom come in our church. A reign of righteousness, thy kingdom come. And thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Let it be done. The will of God. The will of God. The will of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is your father. God is your father. Abba father. He is daddy. A daddy in heaven. He is a rich father. He is a loving father. He is a providing father. He is a caring father. He is a faithful father. Everything he has promised he will give. A father which art in heaven. The Father in heaven is higher than the Father on earth. The Father in heaven is richer than the Father on earth. The Father in heaven is uh, more caring than the Father on earth. A Father which art in heaven is more faithful than the Father's on earth. A Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When you are blessed, is glorified. When you are happy, is glorified. When you are righteous, is glorified. When you have a miracle, it glorifies his name. When you live right, it glorifies his name. It glorifies his name. You'll be, you will be a praise to the name of the Lord. The hand of God in your life will praise the Lord. Unbelievers will look at you. They will want to become Christians because of you. Hallowed be thy name. Honored be thy name. Sanctified be thy name. Exalted be thy name. God is going to be honored because of you. God is going to be glorified because of you. Thy kingdom come. Let it come into my heart. Thy kingdom come. Peace, the peace of the kingdom. The joy of the kingdom. The righteousness of the kingdom. The provision of the kingdom. Let it come to my heart. Thy kingdom come. The authority of the kingdom, the power of the kingdom, the majesty of the kingdom. Oh Lord, thy kingdom come. The truth of the kingdom, the righteousness of the kingdom. Lord, let it come. Thy kingdom come. Let it come today into my heart, into my family, into our church. The kingdom of abundant provision. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Thy kingdom come. And then, Lord, we're praying that sooner than later, it will come to the world when the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of Christ and the kingdom of our Lord. When peace will reign from shore to shore, when righteousness will spread from shore to shore, when the kingdom of Christ will rule, reign, control, direct the affairs of all men on earth. When Jesus will reign as king, thy kingdom come. And thy will be done. Let that time come, O Lord. When Satan cannot frustrate the will of God in my life. When enemies cannot frustrate the will of God in my life. When no power on earth, no power in the sea, no power in the forest can frustrate the will of God in my family. That will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. I want to do that will. I submit to that will. I accept that will. I receive that will. That will be done here in earth as it is done in heaven. Lord, only your will. 
The will of Satan will not be done in your life. The will of magicians will not be done in your life. The will of enemies will not be affected in your life. They will fail. They will fall. Only the will of God, the will of God, the will of God, only that will will be fulfilled in your life. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. As it is done in heaven without interruption, the will of God in your life. Without any delay, the will of God in your life. Without any failure, the will of God in your life. Lord, thy will be done. Lord, thy will be done. Lord, thy will be done. Frustrate the efforts of the enemy that will not allow your will to be done in my life. Destroy all the tools and the instruments of wicked people that will hinder the will of God in my life. Thy will be done here in earth, here on earth, as it is done in heaven. The will of God today, the will of God tomorrow, the will of God all through your life, the will of God in the morning, afternoon, and evening, the will of God in the family, the will of God in your profession, the will of God everywhere you go. Thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. The will of God. The will of God. Every day of your life, the will of God. Every moment in your life, the will of God. Every event in your life, the will of God. Every project in your life, the will of God. In marriage, the will of God. In the family, the will of God. In your work, the will of God. And the will of God is beautiful. It's wonderful. The will of God will bring an abundant provision in your life. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Satan has no part in your life anymore. The world has no part in your life anymore. They are defeated. They are destroyed. It's only the will of God. And the will of God is wonderful. And the will of God is beautiful. And the will of God is enriching. And the will of God is a great blessing. Now you are entering another realm in your Christian life. In your Christian life, when every step you take is the will of God. Every plan you have is the will of God. Every word you speak is the will of God. Every way you live is the will of God. Every event in your life, the will of God. And now all things will work together for good because you love God. And you are called according to His purpose. The will of God. The will of God. The will of God. Close your eyes to any other will. Close your mind to any other will. From now on, thy will be done in my life as it is done in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Before you go, we're going to cancel every contrary will in your life. Any will, anything that is not making you happy, that's not the will of God. Poverty, that's not the will of God. Crying all the time, that's not the will of God. Whatever enemies are planted in your life to frustrate the perfect will of God in your life, we're going to cancel it tonight. Why don't you raise up your hand? Almighty God, we thank you because you are our Father. You are the heavenly Father. You are the faithful Father. You are, the, you are the father that cares. And Lord, all your children are before you. Lord, we just pray the spirit of the father, kind Abba father, will be in everyone right now in Jesus' name. Lord, hallowed be thy name. When we're sick and then people of the world are stronger than we are, they will not honor your name. When we're poor and we're begging the unbelievers around us to lend us something there, that will not honor your name. Oh Lord, I pray from tonight, your name will be honored in every life in Jesus' name. The people of the world, they will see your glory in our lives. Your provision in our lives. And your abundance in our lives. They will come to us to glorify you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray any sin in our character, any sin in our behavior, any sin in our own life that is making people to blaspheme the name of the Lord, take it away in Jesus' name. 
and those people who are kind of dishonoring your name because some of us are married and there's no child yet it's okay and when you have children then you can call me i'll come to your church if your god cannot do this for you how do you want me to follow your god oh lord take this reproach away in jesus name you barrenness you are not here to honor the name of the lord you are not here to glorify the name of the lord i command you barrenness sterility come out in jesus name when, when if our children are dying that will not honor the name of the lord if our children are failing their exams that will not honor the name of the lord the unbelievers will be saying where is your god they will blaspheme the name of the lord oh lord i pray every reproach every failure every premature death that is making people to kind of look down at god take everything away in jesus name we are praying oh lord from today people will see the glory of god in our lives they will see the provision of God in our lives. Every negative thing we cancel in Jesus' name. Lord, thy kingdom come. There's no conflict in your kingdom. There are no enemies in your kingdom. Satan cannot just be jumping around doing whatever he likes in your kingdom. Your kingdom come to every heart tonight in Jesus' name. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of peace and the kingdom of abundance and the kingdom of joy the kingdom of righteousness let it come to everyone tonight in jesus name satan you have no part in this kingdom demons you have no part in this kingdom all those contradictory powers that won't allow the kingdom of god to be established in our families in our church we command you get out in jesus name Lord, from tonight, thy will be done. Lord, from tonight, thy will be done. For your people to get job, that's your will. For your people to be fed in the famine, that's your will. And for your people to pass their exams, that's your will. And for your people, Lord, to be happy and healthy and holy, that's your will. Your will be done tonight in Jesus' name. Sorrow and suffering, that's not your will. Sickness, that's not your will. Being crushed on the power of the enemy, that's not your will. Everything contrary to the will of God in our lives, we cancel in Jesus' name. And Lord, we're looking forward to next week when you will give us abundance. And you'll supply all our need according to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, I pronounce your blessing upon your people your abundance upon your people your goodness upon your people as your people go out no evil i will see them no evil hand will touch them thy will be done for everyone here as it's done in heaven in jesus name reign in every life be the lord and the king in every life confirm your blessing on everybody dear lord in jesus name we pray amen i am blessed already i am blessed already the will of god will always be done in my life god bless you